praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord's name be praised. Praise in the Lord. We are still on our theme, the Christian's worldview, God's perspective. In other words, God's perspective must be you as a born again Christian. Your perspective as well. It must be your worldview. God has a sweeping view of everything. Every day is today, and everybody is just lying before Him. We are like toys He has set before Him, playing with, like you play with your computer game. He knows everything. He knows everything. He sees everything. He knows the heart of everybody, the mind of everybody. The Bible says darkness is as light towards Him. He's omniscient, omniwise. And He understands all things. And what you do, look at life this way. God is not taken by surprise by it. And today, which are going to be the sixth section, our subject is the Christian must see spiritually and mentally as God sees. You have no option. As a born again Christian, the people of the world look at life like chicken. That's why they run either to and fro, full of anxiety, stress. And they scramble for things. And they think that things are scarce. God's economy is not based on scarcity as the world's economy is centered around that everything is scarce. And economics is finding equitable distribution of scarce resources. No, it's never so. God is an overflowing God. God is infinite. Do you understand what is infinite? It means limitless, boundless, ceaseless in his being, in his ways, in his works, in his wealth, in his position, <laughs> in his glories. <laughs> Wonderful. God's economy is not based on scarcity. It's the sin of man and the rebellion of Satan that has made this four-dimensional world to seem to be in short supply. Not that things are in short supply. Things are not. Only wicked men. Only greedy people siphon things, hold things, and make sure that they keep others poor so that they can dominate. It's a matter of power and influence, you should know. And they throw down the line, deceit, lies, and make it into teaching materials for us to study right up to university and get degrees on it and get professorship on it. And we think that we have uh, learned truth. It's not. There are puppeteers behind the scene. <laughs> they want us to be in darkness. That we know nothing so that they can have dominion over us. Jesus said, you know the truth. You know the reality of things. And by knowing it, it will let you walk in liberty, in freedom. And that is why God has sent me to come to you with his word, the Bible, the scriptures, which is not written by mind. It was inspired by him, using human beings to write. But that is his mind towards us as believers in Christ. And for all mankind to take advantage of, the Christian must see spiritually and mentally, mentally as well. As the Bible tells says, that as one thinks, so we see. But we learned the other time that God doesn't think in words. God thinks in pictures, motion, pictures, pictures in action, as well as life, life in which are not film. Things as they are, even in the invisible world, in the spiritual world, the angels, the high-powered angels in the third heaven, as well as in the sixth to the the seventh to the tenth dimension of the Holy Angel, as well as the satanic realm of the fifth and sixth dimension. Everybody's heart is, is, is bare before God, their mind, their action, before you took action, or even you thought about it. He knew of it, and he has countermeasured if what you are thinking and planning and doing happen to be evil. He has already remedial measure to counteract it. God is a God of righteousness, of holiness, and justice. The Christian must see. And we look at Isaiah 46, 10. We have some of this scripture will keep coming. 
God knows the end from the beginning. In preachers and callous, Isaiah 46, verse 10 says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient time, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I'll do all that I please. And what I plan is what I bring to pass. And then even in the context, he said he was bringing an evil man from the east, far east, that was King Nebuchadnezzar, to come and achieve his God's purpose, to discipline God's own people, the people of Israel. God controls Satan. He doesn't make Satan choose what he will do, but he controls him. He limits him. Whatever Satan wants to do, God gives him a borderline, but and the same with all angels as well as human beings. But for every action or inaction that you take, you'll be accountable for it. You'll be judged for it, whether for good or for evil. He does the end from beginning in pictures and life and current. Now we we'll look at First Corinthians. Chapter 1, verse 30, it tells us that it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. I will live the righteousness, holiness, and redemption and focus on for the purpose of our studies. He is the wisdom of God, Jesus. Not that Jesus will give us wisdom. Jesus is the embodiment of the wisdom of God. And he has been made our wisdom, having ascended as Lord and Savior. Jesus has become you as you are listening. He's, he's the wisdom of God. And God's wisdom has no beginning, has no end. God's wisdom is also infinite, limitless. God's wisdom is unchangeable. It doesn't rise or fall. So Christ is the wisdom of God. The first Corinthians 2 CCC, born again Christians already have their mind of Christ. We have met this verse before. Who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Dare to believe as God has spoken to you. Dare to receive and dare to put to use what God has said. We live by faith, not by sight. Living by faith is just believing and accepting God as a because you believe the person who spoke that God. The Bible says there are two things that are impossible for him to do. That is to lie. God can do everything by that thing. Participate in evil. He can lie, nor break his oath. And he has said, We have the mind of Christ. Because of the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross for us, he made it available to you. So we see three points for us to understand well how we are to appropriate put into practice this mind of God which he has given to us in Christ. One, each must accept the truth that he or she has the mind of Christ. You must. I can be talking and shouting for a whole day. If you don't agree or if you think it's too much, and of course it's too much. That is what good news is about the gospel. It's too good to be true <laughs> because we were rebels. <laughs> if we join Satan to rebel, we human beings, including you and I, and we are weak. So when God does it, it's 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 part, is 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 the manifestation of the agape love of God towards us human beings. You, you find it, you look at your experience in life, so you said no. Even now that you are born again, you said no, it can't be. God doesn't know my past. How can I? Even in the natural sense, I don't have high IQ. We are not talking about human IQ. <laughs> we talk about God's own IQ. God's IQ is transcendent, distinct, and high. It's not subject to error. There's no plus and minus to it. There's no probability. It is perfect. It's unique. Each must accept the truth. You must accept this truth. That God's word. The Bible is not my word. It's not the words of my soul. Words of God. Either God is lying or you are lying. Now who is lying? God says we have the mind of Christ. You, a 
born again Christian, according to First Corinthians two sixteen. Number two, you must fix your thoughts on the word of God. That is the Bible to see the defeat of evil doers in this four dimension world. Meditate on the books of the Psalms and Proverbs. All evil doers will be judged even in this present life. But then, if you want to know about the end of all evil, evil doers, you have to read the books of the Bible, the last book, that's the book of Revelation, backwards. You have to read it. You see that in the beginning, Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, it was eating, eating means pleasure, please. God needs every provision in this four dimension word for Adam and Eve. Until chapter 3, then the serpent appeared, Satan appeared, and brought sin, deception, wickedness, pain, suffering, and death to the human race. Now, at the end of all things, God said every eating will be restored. Look at Revelation. The last chapter in the Bible, Revelation, chapter 22. Now, so if you read Revelation 22, then 21 and 20, it equals Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Chapter 1, it's equal to uh, Revelation 22. That's Genesis chapter 1. Everything peaceful. God was making and creating it in pressure. Every provision for man spiritually and natural. Chapter 2, the same. Man was given the garden to keep and manage. And there was no problem. Three, Satan appeared. Revelation chapter 20. Satan will be destroyed forever and ever. Satan will be destroyed forever. You see, that will be the end of Satan. So, 20, Revelation 21, 22, eating is restored. All the things, including more than what even God gave Adam and Eve in the garden. Now, mostly eternal things in addition. The new heaven and the new earth. So, that is what you matter. So, when you read the book of Proverbs and you read Psalms, it will tell you the wicked man, the ungodly man, his descendant even will suffer here on earth. But perchance he may live through life. As the Bible says, you see him growing like a green bay tree and he seems to have no problem, no get his he destroying everybody and getting richer and richer. But the Bible says that the wicked shall not inherit his head, they'll be cut off. If you look at Psalm 73, you turn it Psalm 37, you see that. It's no good. And it doesn't pay to be evil and to reject Yahweh and to reject the Lord Jesus. Number three, you must earnestly pray for the Holy Spirit help to see the way God sees things as he declares in the scripture. So this is how you are to pray. Let me know the end of all things right from the beginning. That should be your prayer. You say, dear Lord, say, dear Lord, dear Lord, help me. Help, Help me to know, to know the end of all things. The end of all things. From beginning. From beginning. And every situation. And every situation. In which I am. In which I am. And every activity. And every activity. I am involved in. I am involved in. Let me know. Let me know. The end of it. The end of it. Right from beginning. Right from beginning. Let me have. Let me have. Pictures. Pictures of the end of it. Of the end of it. Motion pictures. Motion pictures. Of the end of it. Of the end of it. Let me see life and color. Let me see life and color. Of the end of it. On the end of it. Then see. Hold fast to it in spite of intervening changes in circumstance. Hold fast to it. You have to have faith, hold fast to a confession of faith without wavering. Because you see, you see like God. God sees everything. All the things that in, in your country, geopolitical, the world, all those people who have taken control, the health sector, the uh, economic sector, they've, they've taken control of politics and government and spiritually. If they are to see their end, that's what the Bible said that. Their master said that. If he had known, he would have killed the Lord of glory. That's what the Bible says. 
in First Corinthians 2. If he had known that crucified Jesus on the cross will, will lead to his defeat forever and his hand and control over humankind broken, he would have done it. He's blind. That's why they call him Prince of Darkness. God knows. So the problem you are passing through, the Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love God. They who are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8, 28. Joseph knew. He told his brother who sold him to save me that. You people meant it for evil. Evil men do evil things. Satan is also always behind the devils. But he said, God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You can never be defeated. You, the Christian, you must look at life from God's perspective. It's impossible for you to be defeated in your primary life. It is impossible. In your corporate life, it is impossible. If you dare to believe and dare to accept the viewpoint of God, the way it is like, it's impossible. You said all the institutions, you say rich people behind the scene are controlled. No, 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 no. They are to be pitied. The church cannot be destroyed. You yourself cannot be destroyed. You hold fast to it. In Jesus' name we call it and say, Amen. Amen. Now say, Dear God. Dear God. I've started. I've started. And I've resolved. And I've resolved. To mentally. To mentally. And spiritually. And spiritually. To see life. To see life. From your viewpoint. From your viewpoint. And not to be afraid. And not to be afraid. For there's no power. For there's no power. Visible. Visible. No invisible. No invisible. That can. That can. Destroy me. Destroy me. And stop. And stop your plans, your plans and purposes, and purposes, and that of mine, and that of mine, which you have given to me, which you have given to me. I thank you, I thank you that I'm a victor, that I'm a victor all the way, all the way, and I belong, and I belong to a team, to a team that's always winning, that's always winning, and a kingdom, and a kingdom that shall never, that shall, shall never be given to any other. Give to I thank you. I thank you. I see life. I see life. From henceforth. From henceforth. The way you see it. The way, the way you see it. We are. We are. Victors. 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 And no victims. And no victims. And we'll rule. And we'll rule. And reign. And reign. And reign. Over Satan. Over Satan. Luciferians. Luciferians. Evil men. Evil men. Evil women. Evil women. Not only that. Not so only that. We take hold. We take hold of the spiritual resources. Of the spiritual resources. And natural resources. And natural resources. Of this world. Of this world. To invent things. To invent things. To manage them. To manage them. To bring glory. To bring glory. And honor. And honor. To your name. To your name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I call it down. I call it down. Amen. Amen. Now you want to give your life to Jesus. Say, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I also. I also desire, desire to be part to be part of your winning team. Of your winning team. Forgive me. Forgive me. My sins. My sins. And wash me. And wash me with your blood. With your blood. I open my heart. I open my heart. And my life. And my life. To you. To you. I surrender. I surrender. To your lordship. To your lordship. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And be my lord. And be my Lord, my personal Savior, my personal Savior. In your name I pray. In your name I pray. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. I pray for you. You are delivered from the power of darkness and translated to the kingdom of God, dear Son, kingdom of love, from henceforth. I pray and break the hold of the enemy over your life, anxieties and depression. If you have neural problem, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Drug addiction, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I said to lose it free. Now rise up and walk in life with confidence. In Jesus' name, I call it that. I command the angels of God to minister to you, to bear you in their arms, lest you dash your feet against you. So, and I command that the angels of God will bring human helpers into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now four spiritual things that you have to do. I introduce you to that Christian living for growth. The first one is the Bible. And feed on it every day. Let it be the first thing you attend to in the morning. And also make it your final authority in every matter of life. Number two, you pray to God in the matchless name of Jesus. He will hear you. Don't go in your own name. Don't be afraid. It doesn't matter how much sin you have committed. They are washed away. You are now a brand new person. 
even if you if if you happen to sing thereafter know that you are a child of god you have just done what you shouldn't do before pray and worship god in the name of Jesus, and praise him and also bring your prayers and petitions and supplications to him and intercede for this. Number three, attend the Bible believing church. And the number four, tell others about the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are making way. And when we get to the next section, we'll deal with how you will have to resolve, take a firm decision on that which we are doing. It's not that we should wash it in or flip floor. By the time we get to the next session, you might take a certain decision to think like God, to see the world like God, to have God's perspective in life. It's a discipline. It's a practice. You must resolve to advance in it. In Jesus' name, we call that this is a transmission that has come to you from the Holy Ghost Cathedral, the International Headquarters of Jesus Covered Ministry, JCM for short, formerly Jesus Glory Ministries. Until then, I say, May the peace of God and the joy of the Holy Spirit be your portion. May the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest in our Bible as well. Give me now forever. And I hear bigger. Amen. Amen.